This animation shows nicely a device that is used when an empirical formula is to be determined. Now this device is used specifically for hydrocarbons. That is compounds that contain specifically hydrogen and carbon and sometimes oxygen. Combustion reaction of a compound with oxygen forms water and carbon dioxide. The water, represented as blue speckles, is trapped in one chamber, and the carbon dioxide, represented by white speckles, is trapped in a separate chamber. The mass gain of each chamber can be used to calculate the empirical formula of the compound. Here's a problem that uses data generated from a device at the top of the screen. I'm going to show you how to solve a problem like this. I'm going to use a spreadsheet. What I suggest you do now is read the problem thoroughly and record all the information that is in the problem. I have three tables here. I want you to focus on the first two tables, the one with CO2 and H2O. The table with the CO2 has included the mass of the CO2 listed in the problem. This is the amount of CO2 produced from the combustion of the compound. The approach from this point is very similar to determining the empirical formula when given percents. Um, the difference is rather than given a percent of the compound, you're given masses of compounds that contain the atom that you're interested in. For example, we're given the mass of the carbon dioxide. We're interested in the carbon and the carbon dioxide. Let's see what I did. First, I determined the moles of CO2 by using the molecular weight of CO2. I divide the mass of the CO2 by the molecular weight. Now I want to point out I was very careful to use very accurate numbers for the molecular weights of the compounds and the atoms because I want to minimize the error. And you should do that as much as you can be, but particularly when you have three different atoms in a formula, such as this problem. So there's the moles of CO2. The moles of, CO, the moles of carbon in this moles of CO2 is the same because there's one carbon for every one CO2. So this number of moles of carbon is identical. I'll get to why I figured out grams a little later. Let's go down here to H2O. Here's the mass of H2O that was given in the problem. I carry out the identical calculations for water. In this case I use a very accurate number for the molecular weight of water. And I determine the moles of hydrogen. Now notice the moles of hydrogen is not the same as the moles of water. The moles of hydrogen are in fact twice the amount of the moles of the water. That's because there are two hydrogens for every one mole of water. So we multiply that by two. To determine the number of moles of oxygen, what you need to do is determine the mass of carbon and hydrogen in the sample of the compound. So what we're going to do is multiply the moles of carbon that were in the compound by the molecular weight of carbon, which is 12.0107. And therefore, there are 0 0.11271 grams of carbon in the sample. I carry out the same calculation for hydrogen. And I multiply the moles of hydrogen by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.00794. Being very accurate again, I want to minimize the error. 
the mass of carbon and hydrogen collectively are 0 0.11271 plus 0 0.02842. What I'm going to do with these two numbers, if I want to determine the mass of oxygen, is I'm going to subtract these two numbers from the mass of sample that was given in the problem. The mass of the sample was 0.291. Now I have the mass of oxygen. What I'm going to do is a very similar calculation. Determine the moles of oxygen by dividing the mass of oxygen by the molecular, or the molar mass of oxygen. So now I have the moles of all three of the atoms that are in this compound. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. At this point, the problem becomes exactly like the other problem with percent composition in an empirical formula. So I'm going to set up another table which looks very similar to the one in the other video. Moles of carbon, moles of hydrogen, moles of oxygen. Here are the numbers from the previous screen. What I did was divide by the smallest mole value here. The smallest mole value is the moles of oxygen. So I'm going to set up a formula where I'm dividing each of these cells by 0 0.009384. And I copy this formula in the subsequent cells. So the empirical formula has one carbon, three hydrogens, and one oxygen. Therefore, the weight of the empirical formula is 31 grams per mole. We know that the actual molecular weight is 62. Formula CH3O is not the true molecular formula. Similar to the other problem, we need to multiply the subscripts in this formula by a multiplier in order to increase the weight to the true molecular weight. And we find that the multiplier is in fact 2. So the true formula is C28602 and that is consistent with the molecular formula given of 62 grams per mole.